Hello, and welcome to this uh, tip having a look at an application of redox titrations. So we're, we're going to have a look at the general idea behind any redox titration. Normally, some kind of um, color change will occur, so the action reaches the end point. It's usually self integrating for this reason that in starches using the case of uh, isosulfate iodine titrations. The standard color distortion should be anywhere in the number of things. Um, all tend to be oxidizing agents or reducing agents of some kind. And the data moles equation moles answer method for calculation um, will allow you to use what the question tells you and then turn it into the answer you want. So the DMEMA stands for data moles equation moles answer. So you write in the volume and concentration for the standard solution the question gives you. You calculate the moles using any of the C. The equation will tell you the mole ratio between the standard solution and the metal M. If you don't get given the equation, you'll be given how many moles react with each other. You then work out the moles of the metal you're after, and you work out the mass of the metal in the sample using mass equals moles times molar mass. So what we're going to have a look at is how to find moles of water crystallization. So the metal will come in the form of a hydrated salt. And you'll have the formula except for what the value of X is. That's what the question will want you to do. The moles of metal M will allow you to work out the moles of hydrated salt because usually the, the equation of the hydrated salt will tell you how many how many moles of metal are there. So if it's FeSO4.7H2O, for example, one mole of hydrated iron sulfate will be the same as one mole of iron. So you can use the mass of the hydrated salt to work out its molar mass. And then using the formula to work out the molar mass of the anhydrous version. So you take the XH2O away. So the difference between those two will be the molar mass of XH2O on its own. Now water is 18 grams per mole, so you divide that molar mass by 18 to get something close to a whole number, and that will be the value X. So let's look at this example. So instead of reading it all out, I'll just go through various stages of it. Let's visualize the titration process to start with. So you start off by having a sample of solid iron to ammonium sulfate. And what happens is this is dissolved in uh, um, uh, sulfuric acid, one mole per decimeter cubed, 25 centimeters cubed. Now that in itself doesn't mean you have to work out the moles of H2O4. That's not the incidental information because all you're doing is you're providing the large number of moles of hydrogen ions that are needed in the reaction. That's where the H2O4 comes in. So then this is titrated against 0 0.02 0 0 moles per decimeter cubed and ML4 minus, because it says so right here. So the next thing to do is to do the calculation. So using data moles equation moles answer, and using the information that gives you, you can pull those two things together to give you the number of moles of ML4 minus, which is 4.63 times 10 to the minus 4. The equation clearly shows you it's a 1 to 5 mole ratio, so multiplying that up by 5 gives you 2.305 times 10 to the minus 3. So the answer involves finding X and H and XH2O, so I'll show you now how to do that. If you take the equation or the formula for the hydrated salt, and you just look at the anhydrous version, you can work out the molar mass of the anhydrous version by adding everything up. The next thing to do is to take it again. But this time, look at how many moles you have. So the number of moles of iron that you worked out is the same as the number of moles of this. So there's one iron in this formula. So therefore, those are the same. So that's also going to be 2.315 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So that means that the hydrated version is also going to be 2.315 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So to get the relative formula mass, which is what we're after, we tell you to work it out here. You have to take the mass, which is 0.907, and the moles, which is 2.315 times 10 to the minus 3, and that gives us 391.8 grams per mole for this whole thing. So what you do is you minus 284, which is what we worked out a little while ago, away from that 391.8, and that gives you 107.8 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass, quote-unquote, for your XH2O. Remember we said that H2O is, has a molar mass on its own of 18. So you divide that by 18, and that gives you 5.99. Nice long number, but obviously very, very close to 6. 
So that means your molar mass is six. Sorry, your value of x, I stopped sort of big pardon, is six. Okay, hopefully this has been a useful look at um, this applied version of how to do a, a, a redox titration to work out the um, the number of moles of water crystallization. As always, thanks for listening. Until next time, see you soon.